Hey folks, Steve here with another Masons and Arms video. In this video, we'll be looking at 1806. We may be able to get the whole year in one video. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, just to hit some of the highlights of the beginning, uh, I've gone ahead and done all the cards, all the diplomacy, um, basically all failed diplomacy attempts um, to influence minors or majors. France did make a play at Denmark and did not succeed in bringing them in, uh, though they don't necessarily need to. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, France did declare war on Prussia. So the thinking here in a strategic sense is we're, we're really not in a good position to be trying to press into Russia itself, especially from, uh, the South or even Galicia at best, because we can't use Austria as a supply line, which means we somehow need to be tracing supply through, you know, French controlled fortresses and then, a string, you know, big strings of detachments, and um, that, that's just not workable right now. So what I would prefer to do is to try and knock some of these other powers out, like Prussia, get them on a peace timer, allow us to build up, and then if we, you know, go back to war with, uh, you know, Austria or whatever, we can make them. A mandatory ally in the future and then we do get them for supply tracing and that enables us to maybe actually make it out to Russia uh, but I don't think it makes sense to do that we're happy to to wall up the Russian armies where we can uh, fighting in Prussia also allows the Russians to come in and, and fight us some more if they want to um, but the more important thing is now Prussia is you know in an alliance with Russia and if we crush the Prussian armies we can get Russia to just peace out, and we can get something for that, um, like creating the continental system. I do have one uh, correction from last video, or we'll say an adjustment, uh, because in hindsight, I was like, oh no, this that was a bad move. I will allow myself to make the better move. I have let uh, Austria keep Tyrol, and instead I asked for Venezia and uh, Illyria, and now we have... Uh, the Republic of Dalmatia, uh, in effect, down here in Illyria. The reason why I did that is because Tyrol doesn't matter for the continental system, but Dalmatia does. So now, um, in terms of controlling for continental uh, system purposes, we control these ports. We still need to get uh, Naples, so that'll be something of an objective this year. But then, you know, we have, we functionally will control every other trade port all the way through here along the coast. Uh, thanks to us taking the Hansa, we've got the Hansa ones as well. Um, and so basically the only ones that are going to be left uh, to, to add to the continental system are basically uh, Danzig, uh, the other... Uh, the other ports um, up there, and then uh, there's some along the coast that belong to Sweden, but that's kind of its own little thing there. And then uh, St. Petersburg, Riga uh, itself, those Russian ones. So the idea being, uh, if I can maintain control and Britain is continued to be hemmed in like it is, even if we don't conquer Britain outright, um, it is not totally unrealistic to think that uh, we may be able to um, implement the continental system. Like, we're not that far away from doing it. We just need to take uh, Swedish Pomerania, uh, and then we need to put Prussia into the continental system by forcing them to peace. And then when Russia pieces out, we'll ask them to be part of the continental system, which is kind of the historical thing for them. And then we will have the continental system in place. And if we can hold that, I think it's for like two winter turns or something, you know, and at which point any peace deals we have should put us in a pretty safe place. Uh, we will win the game as France that way. Um, so that seemed like the better thing to do than to take to roll. It just, it just didn't matter as much. Um, it did mean that I had to redo some of the production because I was midway through production when I was doing it. And I had to readjust some things, but um, kind of a wash. So, so there you go. A little bit of a change up, um, but that was more of a like strategy mistake that I, I think better of myself to be able to handle here. Um, <clears throat> in terms of cards pulled, France got quite a lot. They've got 
uh, scorched earth, which eh, might not be super helpful. Uh, they do have Schulmeister, which uh, will help be helpful uh, potentially for some March, which will be helpful um, uh, for Napoleon to get some additional movement, or maybe I might need to do that with Messina to get him moving up from the south. And then the uh, coalition has Hussars, which might be useful, could end up being useful. Um, kind of hard to say, at least early on. Uh, and then sappers, so they get a little bit, you know, and we could actually maybe use hussars to uh, to eliminate the supply depot over here uh, in Austria, which would only temporarily uh, inconvenience Napoleon, but um, that would be a thing we, we would need to watch out for. Um, not sure when I would want to play that. I think, you know, do you do it, you know, right before something really important happens? Maybe. Um, and, uh, let's see, anything else? Um, well, well, you know, everyone had their production. Austria, you know, being neutral and they had to give war indemnities to France, has started to build up an army, a home defense force in Vienna. Not much to say about that. Uh, the Turks being unplayed, just kind of built up some stuff. You know, I think that's kind of a neutral thing I can just do. The Prussians certainly built up what they could. They don't have a huge amount of income. And this would have been a, an okay time for Britain to be kind of doling out money to people. But um, we'll talk about Britain in a second. But, yeah, but Prussia built up what it could, and it built up an army and is ready for, for a fight. Uh, and Russia rebuilt as much as it reasonably could and now has an army commanded by Kutuzov himself uh, up there and uh, uh, you know, basically put Alexander in the cupboard. <laughs> uh, and, and Kutuzov is up there ready to kind of head whichever direction he needs to head, but he's really situated by uh, the lake, uh, you know, in Masovia and East Prussia. Uh, not lake, I shouldn't say lake. The marsh is there and he can come through into... Uh, into Prussia to aid them uh, as as it as it may need to happen, um, if they want to, and I think they probably should. Um, then for uh, for Britain, um, so the kind of tough thing with Britain is that uh, they they the, strategically what Britain has is a lot of money, and they can either dole it out or. Um, they can use it to do, you know, various things or be really good at diplomacy because they just have a lot of money they can spend. The, the catastrophic 1805 naval campaign put Britain in a really bad spot. So, one, because of the bad naval stuff, French Corsairs, which we really haven't talked about in a while, we've used them before, they're like right near that glare. Uh, there's a couple of Corsairs in the Corsairs box, and I just never had the opportunity as Britain to send off some some boats to fend off the Corsairs, so they were too busy trying to keep um, the French Navy down, and they just couldn't do it. So uh, ultimately, what what happened was that the Corsairs hurt the British uh, trade income, and then uh, Britain had you know used what money it could to build as many land units as it could, but had to build them in Britain rather than Gibraltar or be prepared to send them anywhere else. They're really there for home defense. So Moore now commands an army in London. Uh, Stuart is holding at Dover um, and will be the first line of defense because uh, currently the French do control the channel and can make a crossing. Uh, Soult is now uh, the commander of the Army of the North and boasts a pretty strong force uh, with some good subordinate leaders that you know France can make a realistic play at knocking Britain down uh, this year. So they're going to try it. I mean, they might as well. This, this position is kind of hard to get. Uh, meanwhile, you know, and, and that's kind of a sideshow. If it happens, we win the game. Hey, great. <laughs> um, what will probably happen is, you know, Britain uh, decides to fight on, and, and then we'll see. But this 1806 could be the year of decision. On the continent, you know, Napoleon and various armies will be fighting against Prussia and Russia, the Ushans. And, and they, I expect them to do reasonably well, because we also now have an army of Germany here commanded by Jordan, 
Uh, he's kind of positioned well to to head east into Prussia. Um, there will be other you know minor stacks that are maneuvering, including the Dutch, uh, that will kind of take care of Cleves and Hesse, and we'll probably swing our uh, S uh, Swiss down to take Neuchâtel. Um, and just you know, there's a there's a few of these little you know dotted uh, Prussian holdings that will get collapsed. We'll probably press into uh, probably press into Saxony, which is right here and is a minor power allied with Prussia. And then you know Prussia itself, and and really they're print they have some detachments out here in the east, but their main armies are here and here. And then there's a few there's a detachment in Berlin, but but much like uh, some of the other minor powers. Um, or maybe more like France, I should say, because uh, this, this is, you know, you'll notice Paris, the capital, has no fortress. Well, Berlin is the same way. There is no fortress of Berlin. So if, you, if you're able to, like, swing an army down in there and you, and you manage to demoralize some of the Prussian armies, that's how you can knock Prussia out. And, and may, you know, we could probably do reasonably well um, by end of summer. Prussia could be down and out. And then it'll be up to, you know, does Prussia fight on or not. I think historically, in game terms, they might have fought on, but it's only for a couple more seasons, so unless Prussia's in a really good position, I might go against history and just get Prussia pieced out um, so they're not tipped all the way over for the French. Um, so, yeah, the, the strategic situation, I mean, you know, I think, I think the... Coalition will do what it can. Uh, they need to get the Swedish army from Sweden into uh, Swedish Pomerania to allow them to bolster Prussia. Um, alternatively, we could see them try to get into Britain and and like have an allied cohort, you know, of the Swedes trying to support Britain. Um, but I think that you know it, it it could go a couple different ways, and maybe what will matter is the way the chits come out. Um, who knows? Anyway, uh, so with that, I think we're ready to start pulling from the chit. Um, maybe there's maybe one other thing I should mention. Uh, yeah, I, so I do want to mention that uh, Ardwolf Slayer does a Monday stream. Uh, and if you're watching this channel, you're probably already aware of that. But uh, he recently did a video just the other day about um, strategic Napoleonic games. And he mentions nations and warm nations in arms. Jeez, nations in arms in that video. Uh, a little bit because uh, it's in the list of games that he, he kind of talks through as part of the stream and we get a little bit of a shout out there um, so go check that out and, and there's a lot of other Napoleonic games mentioned in that stream that might be of interest to you so uh, check that out the, the stream is available for watching uh, you know it's not live anymore right uh, on Ardwolf's channel so you, you can check that out it's a always a fun time good way to spend your Monday afternoon if you have the the, the time um, an ability. Uh, unfortunately, I usually have to miss it because I'm too busy finishing up at work and, and taking care of family stuff. Um, and I catch like the tail end of it and I, and I watch like the beginning and middle of it, you know, later. Anyway, um, let's get to the cup. Okay. One other thing I should point out is in the cup itself, I have put both the second naval impulse chits for both sides. Uh, both players, both sides of my brain know how important the channel is right now. So that ability to uh, move your naval units and make plays there is just really important for the outcome of the game. The fact that France, you know, has this possibility of just winning outright by shutting Britain down while they're gobbling up other parts of Europe is is pretty critical. Anyway, so we'll pull the first uh, chip from the cup, and we get uh, Land Empire Two. Uh, which should mean we're going to see a crossing <clears throat> of the channel because anybody that isn't basically a standalone detachment is going to be able to activate. Um, so we're going to see Salt Cross. We're probably going to see a Spanish army. I didn't really talk about the Spanish. They, they did conquer Portugal. They got some money. They built up an army, and that army is going to go besiege Gibraltar uh, as well. And then uh, we'll probably see more action over here uh, with the Italian army uh, kind of reconstituted heading south. And when I say Italian army, I mean the forces of the minor country of Italy will move south 
help that uh, French unit in the papacy and probably shut down Naples. Well, the army of Italy is probably going to head north to reinforce uh, Napoleon because while Napoleon got a couple of steps replenished during production, he doesn't have that many units. Um, and while I don't think the Prussians can enter Austria, um, I would prefer... Uh, I would prefer him to have a bit more strength at his disposal um, so uh, he can make a, a, a concerted effort to enter Prussia, uh, at least be a legitimate threat while the other forces of France do what they need to do. So we'll play through and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we are after the uh, first activation. I did want to show the aftermath for sure, because I think this was a pretty important turn. Um, one is, uh, the first thing I'll just get out of the way, the Spanish army went down to Gibraltar, which is off camera, did not succeed in taking uh, the fortress, so they are continuing to besiege it. The next activation, you know, we may see uh, Gibraltar fall, we'll, we'll see, uh, but continues to be <clears throat> under threat. Uh, down in uh, southern Italy, uh, the French forces are now uh, about to be besieging Naples, which will shut that whole thing down, um, and then uh, in the, uh, I guess, German theater, you could say the Army of Italy is moving up. Uh, Napoleon did move, and he took Dresden. Um, he sprang across, caught the Saxon army that tried to get away, um, but failed its uh, avoid combat role, and he smooshed them, took Dresden, uh, and is sort of awaiting reinforcements, but he doesn't have to worry too much. Um, we also, uh, because we have other minor forces moving to take Cleves. Um, I'm not sure that I actually need to do that, uh, if only because, I mean, some of these Prussian holdings are these one hexes. And we're going to want at least Neufchatel. Uh, Ansbach kind of doesn't matter. Cleves, we would want, we don't need to take the fortresses, I don't think, to to get them in a peace deal um, if we knock Prussia out is how I think that works. So I'm more doing this just for, I don't know, role play reasons maybe. I don't know. I don't know what to think of it. I don't know if I need to take them at all. I'm guessing I don't need to. Um, but at least these guys are going to be in some level of uh, – uh, well, let me think about this for a second. Maybe I do need to take them because I, I, in theory, am conquering them independent of Prussia. And then I get a different deal from Prussia when I piece them out, I think is how that works. I think that's how it works, so we're going to do that. Um, anyway, uh, the Army of Germany uh, smooshed the, uh, what, what was this, the Brunswick uh, force there that was just sitting in Brunswick. And then... Uh, a big battle, a major battle, was fought at Magdeburg with the French crossing the river bridge, uh, which was a penalty. The, the Prussians stood and fought because it was, um, you know, good terrain, uh, evenly matched in terms of steps. Uh, they were disadvantaged on the die roll modifiers, um, and it was actually a closer battle uh, where the French only won by a little bit, uh, but they did get the Prussian army to demoralize which brings Russia down to one alliance credit. Um, and the thing that I forgot to do as Britain was to spend any money uh, increasing their... Uh, uh, increasing their alliance credit because they just didn't have the money to. They're too busy building new fleets uh, and stuff over here. So um, it, it's very likely Prussia... Or, or Russia is simply going to quit just as soon as uh, we see Prussia um, lose something else. So kind of too little too late for the Russians to make a difference, it feels like. So so generally speaking, war against Prussia is, is off to a pretty good start, and we should be able to overwhelm them, maybe be in Berlin uh, by the end of the turn. We'll, we'll see. It's going to depend on how things go from here. Um, and then in Britain itself, uh, we did make a crossing. Um, and the way that I played it as the British is I had a core here in Dover uh, with a leader. And they stood and fought because the French came over in enough force that it actually caused it to be a medium-sized battle, which is more bloody. And so I chose, rather than for the British force, uh, the core there, 
to retreat, it would just stand and fight, make use of the, the straits as die roll penalties on the French. Uh, the French assuredly destroyed that corps, but in the process, it did cause a step loss to the French, which ended up mattering a little bit because when the French then uh, went to cross the Thames and attack London, uh, the British actually won the battle. So this was going to be, uh, it was a medium-sized battle. Um, it, it, it had some significance. I think it was like, I want to say the French were advantaged on the die roll modifiers, but the British won out. Um, the French managed to avoid being demoralized because the differential was only one step more. I think they caused, the British caused three step losses to the French. The French caused two to the British. So the British were actually kind of advantaged here. I, I'm not sure that they want to try to counterattack the French uh, over that river bridge, but um, Britain stands, and in response, the French are moving these uh, single corps that were on the coast to try to get some reinforcements to keep the fight going. Um, but it's very precarious because, again, at, at any point, the, the British fleets could maybe make a breakout and disrupt this whole operation. So it's going to be a really close thing. Uh, so the, the, the game tension is high, though I think it's the French trying to figure out, are they going to achieve an automatic victory here one way or the other uh, with Britain under threat and Russia about to quit the coalition and Prussia. Prussia still has some fight in it, but I think the French certainly have the advantage. So now we're going to pull the, the next chit. I think the worst chit that the allies could get would be the four chit so hopefully they don't draw that but we'll we'll see what we get um okay empire land one we can't use that so we'll hold it aside and then we'll pull uh winter quarters which we're not gonna it, it's the first time we drew it so we'll keep that in mind um and we'll pull again <laughs> and we got an empire naval two chit which we can play uh, so we will do that. Um, I don't know that there's a whole lot that we want to do there. Um, <laughs> uh, any adjustments, I guess, would be the key thing. Um, no, I think we're good. So we'll just pull from the chip cup again. Um, the only thing I could see being useful would be actually to send these guys up to the North Sea. Let's see, do we have any any other extra extra ones that would matter here? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. We'll put a fleet in the North Sea to just make sure that the Swedish can't reinforce uh, Britain. That's kind of the important thing there. All right, back to the chit cup for realsies. Uh, okay, that's another empire chit. <laughs> Come on, give me a coalition chit cup. Oh, empire naval one. Um, I have to play that one, so... I guess we're... Okay, so France is done with its naval moves. There's nothing else we want to do necessarily so we'll just pull again okay coalition land one which is maybe the better draw for them to get out of all the possible possible ones the reason why you don't want to draw the four chit is that by and large the coalition doesn't have very many four rated leaders um which means that you know they're going to make a move that doesn't really matter and then the next land chit would have to be a french chit uh, which it is almost, unless you have a really good leader in an area of importance, it's almost like <clears throat> your opponent's getting a back-to-back -back turn uh, because all of their, you know, their other leaders, threes or fours or whatever, may get to go again, you know, twice in a row and really disrupt things before you can get there and intercede. So a one is actually a pretty good, um, a pretty good activation. Uh, and I and I think it's coming at a really good time for the coalition because they need to make something happen here. Um, though honestly, their their options are limited to Prussia and Russia uh, because the British can't really do anything. They need to hold London, and then the Russians can be coming to the east um, and start making their way over. But that's going to have some limited utility and then the Prussians are going to have to do something to react to the French moves and that may be the best thing that they can do. 
Um, there's still some naval moves that the coalition will get to have, so we know that 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 could be advantageous. But it'll matter on like what what else is going on uh, later in the turn. So we'll we'll play it through and we'll show the action. Okay, we played through a couple of chits. Uh, the coalition land had been set up to get the Russians into eastern Prussia. They were working their way west to try to come to the Prussians' aid. But over the course of the next chit, which was the Empire Land 1 chit, um, we also drew the Winter Quarters chit. It, the Winter Quarters chit has now been drawn twice, so the turn could end soon. But uh, Gibraltar has been captured by the Spanish, which resulted in the British fleet there wanting to escape through the blockade. They lost a battle, lost a ship, and then had a retreat. I, the rules don't have a good explanation case for where... Uh, and this, again, part of the sort of underbaked aspect of this game where what happens to a British ship that is expelled from the port, loses a battle against the blockade, um, I don't think it should be allowed to escape um, because otherwise they would have just escaped the blockade to begin with. So I had them fight another round of combat and then the last ship was destroyed. So the British fleet in Gibraltar totally knocked out, which means that Brit Britain only has five fleets on the board of its own in, in some of the minor countries. Um, similar thing happened sort of down here. Uh, Naples has been taken. This expelled this uh, fleet, which did actually push back the Spanish fleet, but it's got nowhere to go. Um, it's going to die uh, when the conquer phase gets taken care of, and so we've started to move forces back north. Um, in Britain, importantly... Uh, the French attacked London once again. The odds were pretty much even. The diural modifiers were the same. The French won by just a little bit and pushed them out. Uh, the British were going to roll for demoralization. They needed to roll a six to become demoralized, and they did. Um, so really bad luck for the British. Uh, so they've been pushed back. They're not doing well. And then we've started to move uh, some of those French corps. One to reinforce the army in London. One to hold the supply line at Dover. And, uh, and, and basically, you know, it, it, it's not that the British can't still try to make something happen. It's just going to be, uh, that much more difficult, uh, because of everything else going on. So, um, that's kind of the, the situation there. Uh, they, they could, they could try to snake around and knock these guys out, but it's going to be kind of a tough thing, uh, all things considered. Um, and then in Prussia, and we, you know, at some point I may need to adjust the camera situation here uh, better. Basically, the three French armies in this area have, have moved forward, um, have pushed the Prussians out of Berlin, and the Prussians are currently demoralized. Um, it is not enough to make them come out of the war, uh, so we need to actually take Berlin and either Königsberg or Warsaw or something. Um, based on the uh, conquer rules. So while their alliance credit is dropping like a stone, uh, it's not enough. It, we, we probably won't put Prussia away until the end of summer. Uh, the other important thing is with the loss of London and the loss of Berlin, Russia uh, alliance credit dropped to zero, and apparently in the rules, you immediately sign a peace. Um, and that's, it, it says immediately. So we're not waiting until I guess, the end of the turn, we just do it right away, and you basically treat it like four peace clauses. I've not figured out what all the peace clauses will be yet, but I wanted to show you guys the aftermath. And, and basically what's going to happen here is when the next coalition shit comes up, the Prussians are going to have a chance to try to remoralize themselves and take Berlin back. Same thing, you know, whatever the, the British can do. But the Russians are out. Like, they sign a peace deal, I pulled the Russian armies out of Prussia. The rules aren't super specific to that, but it seems to imply that's what you should do. Um, and then I'm, I've got to figure out what the peace clauses will actually be. I think certainly one of them will be have Russia join to the continental system, and then uh, we'll see what else makes sense. I don't think there's much reason to, like, take Corfu. You know, that doesn't really... Um, doesn't really mean much to me, so something like indemnities would be nice. Uh, I, I just need to look and see like what what actually makes sense here. Um, probably won't be much. We still have the Swedes that could intercede, 
uh, and the and the French armies here are kind of worn out, um, but we still also have a uh, a forced march card that we can use to either finish off the Prussian army or to uh, disrupt the um, disrupt the Swedes, which we, we may end up needing to do. So um, you know they, the the coalition needs a naval impulse to kind of do anything there, but so far um, all things are looking really good. For the French, we've also, uh, I should point out, um, have captured most of the things around here that really matter. Um, sort of the, the next thing to target is to finish off the fortress in Saxony here. Because um, while we have a capital at Dresden, we technically need to take Wittenberg to uh, conquer Saxony. And the French do want to do that. So I'm going to have to think about, like, do I, do I go... T you know, take down Wittenberg while I can with Napoleon on a forced march and then worry about the Swedes later? Um, or do I try to knock down the Swedes' ability to join the battle by coming up here and striking here, figuring that, like, we're still going to have summer uh, to take Wittenberg? And I may just do that, um, but we definitely want to get Saxony. So the, the way that the dipl diplomacy rules seem to work is, indeed, if... Like, I, I'm going to have to look at this again. I, I think if you force a major power out during the middle of the year, if you conquered their miners, I think you can annex them then, right? Because you're signing a deal with Prussia. You don't necessarily have to wait for winter, right? Because to me, it, then it would be like you wouldn't want to sign a peace until winter so that you could get the miners. But the major power is brought low, like you should be able to annex the miners. So again, I, I, I keep saying that there's a little bit of this underbaked feeling like, you know, if you ever like, I don't know, had a piece of, uh, I don't know, toast or bread or something from a bakery and like the bread didn't cook all the way or something like that. There's just a little bit of, you run into that, you kind of don't care because you're munching on your sandwich, but, um, you know, there might be something a little tricky with that. But generally we will see most of Germany under French control, with the exception of Thuringia, which we did not get. Uh, we didn't bother to, but we'll probably pick it up when we go to war with Austria at some point in the future. So um, looking up and up, and uh, we'll go to the, the chit cup to see uh, what else happens here. Uh, Empire Land 3 doesn't work. Coalition Land 4, uh, which is really not that great of a, of a pick. Um, so let me see if there's anything that the Allies can do, uh, Coalition can do with a four. Uh, they can't move the Swedes. They can't move the British. Uh, they can't move the Prussians. Um, and, of course, the Russians are neutral. So this is actually a dead chip. For the uh, the British, unfortunately, for them, um, I don't see a leader that they can activate this turn um, or this impulse. So we're gonna have to go back to the French. Uh, and the next chit then will be oh, coalition naval two. So this is the opportunity for the British to make something happen. Um, they're very fortunate that they actually got that because that that's gonna make a big difference here for the rest of the. Uh, the rest of the, the turn. Um, so they have an opportunity to try to break out with their fleets, um, and then they also have uh, the Swedes that can do something if only, you know, if the only thing they can really do is land a force on the continent to, to try to delay the Prussians, that may be, or the, the French, rather, that may be the best that they can do. Let me see what happens, and we'll show the aftermath. Okay, I wanted to show, we, we played through a number of uh, counter draws, um, and the chit order really mattered here. I'm also adjusting the camera, so it's a little bit easier to see. Um, so a couple of things. And, and regarding the Russian peace treaty, uh, we asked for uh, basically an extended peace, which only gave us one extra turn uh, on the die roll, so not that great of a peace clause. We did ask that Russia join the continental system. Um, and then we're also going to get uh, war indemnities from Russia. So that's how Russia's getting knocked out. And then uh, when we actually played through, with the naval move, the Swedish army uh, 
sailed into Swedish Pomerania. Um, and so this is kind of one of those weird things. The coalition side of my brain did not know that the French had a forced march. So what did I think would have been valuable to reinforce the Prussians because Napoleon's army, Jordan's army, and Massena's army were all uh, out of activations, at least as far as the coalition could tell. So the idea was ship the Swedish army into Strassland, and then when they would activate again, to move to cut off the French supply, uh, supply tracing one way or, or another, uh, and, and basically make it so that the French armies would take some attrition, thus giving the Prussians a better opportunity to stay alive. Unfortunately, while they did land there, uh, the next ship uh, after the Coalition Naval II marker was drawn was an Empire land ship, and Napoleon activated with the forced march and demolished the, uh, the Swedish army, captured the, the fortress there, and that ended his activation. Uh, and then when we pulled the next ship, it was Coalition Naval I, uh, basically all attempts to break out in the remaining uh, British holdings failed, and so the British were down to three fleets. Uh, we were hoping to make something happen. We even tried to get the Swedish fleet into action, which they might not even be allowed to do, uh, but I decided they, they'd give it a shot, and uh, were pushed back So uh, and, and lost one of their fleets. So really, the, the fact that the Empire has naval supremacy it is almost certainly going to mean this game's going to end early and it's going to end with a French automatic victory. Something I really don't see as likely and, and it is, I don't think it's frustrating because I've had a lot of fun maneuvering the armies uh, in Germany and you know against uh, Austria and Prussia. So even if France wins, I think we can easily set up um, the like 1809 scenario and uh, you know have fun with that and continue to play through a different part of the campaign. Um, if it goes that way. I'm not sure it will, but it, there's a very possible uh, instance where that's going to occur. Um, so after that failed attempt, uh, fail, or I'm sorry, the failed breakout attempt for the Coalition Naval, I did draw Winter Quarters, which was the third time I drew it, which means it's the end of spring, uh, which means we didn't get the Coalition Land 3, the Empire Land 4, or the Coalition Land 2 activation shit. So you would say this is probably a a very French-sided chip pull order where uh, the Prussians did not get a second chance to uh, moralize, you know, to rally, <laughs> get rid of their demoralization, and then maybe try to strike back at one of the French armies, which means that they're going to start this summer turn now uh, demoralized. If the French go first, then we could see three French armies converge on the Prussian army and, and basically set things up to where um, th they're they're going to, uh, th you know, they're, they're, they're pretty much going to win. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. You know, Prussia is doomed. Uh, and, and for that matter, Britain is doomed. And that's about as much as can be said there with uh, Russia now neutral. Austria is neutral. Um, it's, it's not a good time for them. Um, so uh, the naval chits are not going to be uh, the two, the number two naval chits will not be in for summer, but all the other chits will go in, and uh, we will see what happens next. Everyone's kind of out of money uh, for diplomacy. I did try to do some diplomacy uh, as set up for the summer turn, and none of those uh, diplomacy attempts succeeded anywhere. Um, I do think that France is going to declare war on Mecklenburg, um, and we're going to do that to annex it into France and basically get some more money for France. So, so that is going to take place. So technically, you know, we could put a marker here that says Mecklenburg is allied to Britain. Uh, but in this next turn, you know, all that's going to really happen is like this detachment's going to move over, sit in the capital of Weimar and, uh, They'll get conquered. So it, we're really just cleaning up Europe at this point with the empire. There's plenty of forces on the board uh, to continue to pressure the last Prussian army. The Prussians just don't have enough stuff on the board to matter. And then it, I think what I'd have to look. Um, I actually do need to double check if 
yeah, I should stop what I'm doing because it could be that Prussia is actually, should be surrendering at the end of that spring turn. I'm going to have to double check the rules on this because it, it, they have one army that was destroyed. They have one army that is demoralized and their capital is taken. That may be enough to make them peace out. So g give me a second to look this up before we get into the rest of summer, I guess, and and double check. So that's my bad. I probably should have done that before I started the summer diplomacy phase. Um, but but it is true. It, it is feasible that they are in the conquer condition. So let me see about that. Okay, so to be clear, uh, Prussia does not peace out because their, their list of keys are Berlin, Königsberg, and uh, Warsaw, if they have it. And technically, they do have it. Uh, as it is part of Masovia, which is currently controlled by Prussia. Um, so we're going to need, uh, while all the Prussian armies are either destroyed or demoralized, that only takes one key off the required list. So we would not need, say, Warsaw uh, if we had Königsberg. But since we don't, uh, we still do not have, um, we have not knocked Prussia out. So there's going to be a little bit more fighting. Now, in a game where Russia maybe avoided having its army destroyed in Austria and it had more alliance credit, or the British had put more money into the alliance credits for Russia, uh, had the money to do that, um, which is maybe a mistake on my part for not sacrificing, you know, not bothering to build more British fleets, but to give Russia more money. This is where you kind of get the, you know, the battles that occurred over here and then eventually, you know, the fights Battle of Friedland and all that stuff happens off to the east. Having Berlin isn't enough. We'd still need to push further east for Prussia due to those rules. So Prussia's still in it, however dire the situation may seem for them and how easy they may be crushed here in this summer term. Um, the other thing we need to actually look at is um, the British situation. So as it stands right now, uh, France is in the capital of London. That is the only key that matters for Britain. <clears throat> the demoralized army doesn't really count for anything here. Uh, and it is in supply, so the French can trace supply to Paris. Um, so what this means is that uh, Britain could be conquered, which would lead to the end of the game. That would be the automatic French victory. Uh, but Britain is going to continue the war, right? They kind of have to, or the game's over. So this gives them an opportunity to try to get back uh, into London and push the French out. However unlikely that may be, that is still their possible thing. Or uh, they cut off the supply path of uh, the French, in which case, you know, the control of the capital does require them to be in supply, I believe. So Britain's not, it's not the end of the game. Britain has a couple of opportunities to try to turn things around such that the game doesn't totally end, but they are in trouble. Uh, that is for certain. Uh, they only have two seasons to do it with. So by the end of autumn, they need to have pushed the French out, however unlikely, again, that may be. Um, so with that, uh, that's just some of the political stuff that I wanted to make sure I talked about. It, it, again, you can kind of tell, like, this: had the British not failed in those naval battles, we would be strictly looking at a European conflict, and there would be more pressure on Spain and Portugal There'd be more pressure on the mainland of France where they'd have to be, you know, keeping coal on the coast as a defense. Um, we'd probably still see Napoleon winning, you know, the terrestrial conflicts here, the, the land-based conflicts against Austria and Prussia, but it would be under kind of different tone where we're just doing it because we need to and we want to get in better position in the long term. Here, it's like, hey, we're headed towards a victory if we can just keep things going. Uh, so just very, very different tone effectively. Uh, so with that, we're going to pull the first shit of the uh, the summer 1806 turn, and we'll see what we get. It is a Empire Land 4, which is actually probably one of the best shits to pull for the French. And honestly, that this feels so... I mean, the, the luck has been so French-sided in this campaign, I feel like we're going to have to re-rack no matter what happens. <laughs> like, it's just... It's a little unfair. I'm glad we've gotten a C... The, the campaign in Austria out of Austerlitz, we, we've been able to see the French beat Austrian armies, Russian armies, now Prussian armies. So I feel pretty good about like, hey, at least this set of scenarios has been enjoyable. 
um, or you know the, the, this couple year uh, campaign, we may really just need a re-rack for the 1809. And I feel okay doing that if that's where things end up. We might have to do it. Um, so it's going to be the, uh, the French turn. And what we may end up see happening here is uh, a conjoining of French armies to finish off the, the Prussians effectively, um, or at least get them in a position where uh, they, there's not much more for them to do. Uh, so I certainly see that as being um, feasible here of what will probably happen. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see, guys. Uh, we'll play it through. Again, with it being a four, only certain leaders are going to be able to activate. Um, but uh, there'll be enough for uh, for this turn, certainly. All right, guys. Uh, I think we have game. So I played through the rest of the chits. Um, a set of wheeling maneuvers occurred where uh, the Prussians tried to retreat through Danzig the French pursued to a point, um, they split off, the armies of uh, Italy and Germany together uh, pursued, took Danzig. We were getting to the point where we were running out of strength points, and so I was pulling up detachments and dropping off depots to maintain supply as we chased the Prussians, because we were going to run out of time. Um, they retreated across uh, the, the Vistula here, and then... Uh, Napoleon went and took Warsaw and was kind of sitting in it, uh, which would have guaranteed Prussian uh, conquering. And at the last moment, the Prussians made a dive for Napoleon because he only had three steps with him. Um, and in a shameful display, their attack across the river got bungled terribly. Uh, so Napoleon pulled out all the modifiers that he could, scored a pretty good victory. Uh, the Prussians rolled uh, snake eyes and proceeded to do no real damage to the French because they have crappy die roll modifiers at this point. And uh, they got demoralized to boot and took an extra step loss. So the Prussian army just, you know, I mean, the Grand Army's on its last legs, and yet it put out a stout defense at Warsaw, defeated the Prussians. The Prussians were treating, um, and as the final... Uh, set of chits coming out. There, there's nothing left to activate, uh, at least in the Prussian front, which is pretty much now guaranteed Prussia will fall. Now, if they tried to get into this idea that they were going to continue on, that's certainly something that could maybe work out in their favor. Um, maybe. Uh, the problem is, you know, they've got enough of their territory occupied. Um, whoops. He's supposed to be here. I don't know why that got adjusted. Um, that, that basically, uh, you know, pr Prussia's out, right? And it's a question of would they continue to fight on? Probably not a great idea. Um, they would probably want to peace out. It's kind of immaterial uh, because Britain has been conquered or will be, no matter what happens, will be conquered. So, uh, the British Army tried to make some maneuvers to cut supply. They had succeeded in taking uh, Portsmouth back after uh, a French corps had captured it and then had made a move to try to cut the supply of the, uh, the French Army, um, but ended up getting outmaneuvered uh, with the chip pool, and uh, basically the British Army was destroyed. There are no, there are no more British units on the board um, to stop the French from maintaining their conquer state. Their fleet is not strong enough to contest the French fleets. There is no way to avoid Britain being conquered, and so the war of the third slash fourth coalition ends not only in the defeat of Prussia or the functional defeat of Prussia but the defeat of Britain, and one can only guess at what the history would be like from here on out. Now, to be said, a couple of things here. You'll notice it takes, you know, you really need a depot here and a depot here to get to London and stay in supply. You do have a flank that can be, you know, shot at, which is what the British tried. Um, I would genuinely say that this campaign... Uh, I could have played better as the coalition. I feel like I, I maybe could have avoided this somehow, 
but I didn't. Um, and there are probably some times with Russia that like maybe I should have just been pulling back sooner than I did in, in Austria, and that led to the Russian army being destroyed, which which put them closer to signing a peace deal than they might have otherwise had done, uh, which made a, would, would have made Prussia much harder to knock out, actually. It would have been a very difficult set of campaigns, probably would have stretched into 1807, certainly, uh, with, with that in mind. But um, as it stands, with without Russia's reinforcements, Prussia uh, couldn't stand against the even somewhat worn out French uh, armies and you can kind of see at the map here, like total complete domination. So what do you what do you think happens, right? Britain, Britain gets knocked out, major reparations, Gibraltar is handed over to Spain, they lose other territories, the Mediterranean becomes a safe haven for the French Empire. All of Germany is pretty much under French control, uh, barring Thuringia. Uh, Prussia's knocked out of the war. Um, Russia's at peace, part of the continental system. The continental system does well. Maybe in the future, Austria pipes up again, and the French conquer Austria again, um, and and who knows what else. But the point is, Britain has been shut down. So, this is an automatic victory for the French. Um, it it is very unlikely that this event will happen, because if you're watching it right, you're watching this video series, and you're seeing me do this miraculous thing that is hard to hard to understand from a historical context. It is the net result of me rolling just absolute garbage with some of the best British fleets on the bell curve. We're talking the far, far edge of the shitty part of the bell curve, while the French did reasonably well most of the time. And whenever they lost, they lost only in the margins and really didn't lose ships. That is not supposed to happen. What is supposed to happen is the French fleets get destroyed. And mathematically, that is what should happen. Just that is how the bell curves are going to operate. You should expect to see the French fleets uh, get tied up, blockaded, uh, unable to press against the, the British Navy. In this game, it just didn't happen that way. Um, and multiple occasions, it should not have happened that way. And yet it continued to do so. Um, so I want to warn you, like watching this, you might think, oh my gosh, you know, this game is so heavily favored for the French. Uh, you know, how can the French fleet defeat the British fleet? It should not have happened. It should not have happened. It, just should, it shouldn't have happened. But it did, and so the French win. Um, had this not happened, and, and France would still be, you know, busy fighting the Prussians, I think the game would continue to be interesting, um, because then it's a matter of, like, what happens with Spain? Do we, do we actually see Spain ever really leave? What happens when we get a couple years of the French being able to build up all their armies and get into the position that they want to be in? Um, there's a lot that could have evolved out of here, but but again, uh, the the odds just so heavily thrown back on uh, the British and the coalition that there's just no way to escape the fate. Um, and it was it is kind of a shame because I was getting pretty stoked on you know seeing what happens with Prussia and creating the Federation, Confederation of the Rhine uh, and Westphalia and all that kind of stuff was going to be coming up. Um, and we were in a, in it, and even if we didn't have Britain on the ropes, we were pretty close to having the continental system put in a, into effect, which might have, you know, made it, you know, again, uh, more likely for, for victory anyway. So there's just a lot of different ways we were, we were reaching a victory state. Um, but, but a lot of it was predicated on the British Navy just being torn apart. So I think given that, um, when I look at the scenario stuff, um, again, did not expect it to go this way, um, but not wanting the game to just be totally over. To say We feel like we've kind of gotten through the wars of the Third and Fourth Coalition. Um, I'm not going to play the Spanish ulcer scenario just because, like, I don't know. I, I would rather just play the big grand campaign. So I think what we're going to do, guys, is I'm going to try to re-rack the game, and we'll re-rack for the 1809 scenario. Um, that should put us in a much uh, much more balanced state, probably. Um, and if that scenario gets sideways, we've still got options like the 1813 campaign. We could play just a Russian 
1812 campaign, if for some reason we don't really get a chance to play that, I feel pretty satisfied that we got a, you know, battle in Austria. The French have defeated a multinational set of armies in this campaign. That was pretty fun. I think there's still a lot more to enjoy. So give me some time uh, after this video uh, to rearrange the map and the counters and get cleaned up and rack up the 1809 campaign, and we'll continue that uh, in the next video. I'll have to maybe look at changing the name of some of the videos to better reflect what we're doing here, uh, but we'll, we'll deal with that. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, sorry for a very quick climactic conclusion, um, but uh, what we'll, we'll do more here with this game. I will generally say here at this point that I am enjoying the game. I think it's a very engaging game. The mechanics tend to work pretty well. Um, the thing that still kind of surrounds this is that underbaked feeling. Some of those mechanics are just not cooked all the way through. Uh, and, and, you know, rather than it being like a steak where you can, you can enjoy a, a rare steak or something, this just feels a little bit like you got a sandwich and that, again, that dough just didn't get cooked all the way through. You can, you can get through it and, it and it's still a good sandwich, but that kind of takes some of the sheen off a little bit. Um, but still an enjoyable time so far. Uh, just a very grand epic scope game and, and I'm still having a good time with it. So we'll keep it rolling guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Keep on gaming.